we know a power series is an infinite series where we're taking the sum of terms of the form a sub n times x to the n, which basically means that your powers of x have coefficients that depend on the current exponent. So x to the second will have a different coefficient than x to the third or x to the fourth, etc. Now these infinite series, you, you can kind of think of them as infinitely long polynomials because what you have is differing powers of x that you're adding together like a quadratic. You have ax squared plus bx plus c, but rather than just adding up three terms or four terms or five terms like we typically do for polynomials, we're actually adding infinitely many terms. So we don't go up to x to the second or x to the fifth or tenth, these actually go on for forever. And so when you write them this way, when you write them as a series, these look very similar to the series we've studied previously where we talked a lot about convergence and the ratio test and the root test and the p-series test and all those good things. But one big difference that we have is that our infinite series have variables in them. Now, what that's going to change a little bit is we can't really talk about whether this guy converges or diverges until we've made some choices for x. For example, some x values might make the series converge, but other choices for x might make it diverge. So we can't really say if this series converges or diverges without talking about specific x values. But this is a big deal talking about the convergence of these infinite series here. All right, so let's make a couple observations and this will help us understand this a little bit better. All right, the first one I've already mentioned, uh, that these power series will converge for some x values and diverge for other x values. That's important to realize. Now we actually have a little bit of information as to where we might can begin. Where, where can we start looking for converging x values? Well, power series always converge at wherever it's centered. This one happens to be centered at zero, but to write it in a, a little bit more general way, just to make it more clear, this is typically x minus c to the n. So for the one I wrote, c was zero. That's why we had x to the n. But here's why your power series is guaranteed to converge at c, at wherever it's centered. If you took out the x, you plugged in a c, then the inside of the parentheses would be what? It'd be zero, right? And if you're taking a summation of zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero, will that be a finite number when you're done? Of course it will be. The only term that's not zero is your leading term. When n equals zero, you'd have a sub zero times one. But apart from that, everybody else is zero. So I can promise you wherever it's centered, if it's x minus three, x equals three will be a spot of convergence. We, it will converge at three, for example, if it's centered at three. So that's, that's good to know. That's a good, kind of a good starting point for, for looking at converging x values. All right, to help explain this a little bit further, let's actually look at a specific example. All I've done for this one is I, I've just made it a little bit simpler. I've let the a's be one, just so I don't have to look at them. And basically I have x to the n. Now this is going to converge for some x's and diverge for other x's. First thing I notice is that this guy is centered at zero because it's x minus zero to the n. So I'll put a little green dot here meaning that this guy will definitely converge at zero. Now beyond that, I don't really know. Um, it might converge to the left perhaps, or it might converge to the right of zero, um, but we, that's what we need to look at. Now when you look at this guy, what, what does he kind of remind you of? What does he kind of look like? Well to me, he, he reminds me a lot of a geometric series, a times r to the n where the a is one and the r is x. Now let's think back, back to our geometric series test. When did a geometric series converge? Well, if I remember correctly, it was as long as the r was less than one, so here's one, as long as we're less than one and greater than negative one. And, and in fact, that's the case. For example, if x was a half, this would converge. If x was seven, this would diverge. And so we see we have convergence from minus one to one. 
Now there is going to be a, an issue that we're going to have to look at in a later video. I don't think I really want to go through these details in this video, but we are going to have to check the endpoints separately. We're going to have to examine negative one and we're going to have to examine one. Uh, but for now, we'll just say that the convergence is on the interval. This guy converges, converges on the interval from minus one to one. So uh, th this is going to be a big question going forward. Given a big, ugly power series, we're going to be expected to say what x's make that series converge, what x values make that series diverge. Right Now, uh, in the next video, we're going to um, stop this one right now, but in the next video, we're going to look at what, what are your options for convergence. Uh, does it always have to look like this to the left and to the right of where it's centered? Um, can it be more? Can it be less? Can it only be at the center? You know, things like that. That's what we're going to answer in the next video.